these social media influencers, the memes, the chainsaws, which I want to talk about because he right. is fan. There he is on the cover of uh, an AP article wielding a chainsaw. His supporters, uh, there's videos of them running chainsaws. I even saw a guy with a chainsaw mask like walking into the voting booth. Uh, the yeah. title of this article for our <laughs> listeners is A Man, A Plan, A Chainsaw. And that's because Millet uh, has presented something called the Chainsaw Plan. Uh, it, it, here, this quote at the beginning, to your point, he says, the cast is trembling, um, he yells while brandishing a chainsaw. Uh, and he presented the Chainsaw Plan in central Cordoba province uh, in June 2022, it is his blueprint for the wholesale reform of the state to slash public spending, scrap half the government's ministries, sell state-owned companies, and eliminate the central bank. That all sounds pretty good to a libertarian. If he is elected, what are the political realities? How much of that of his agenda do you believe that he could accomplish? Well, that said, that's a good question uh, because it's it's key to what many voters are considering uh, when thinking about voting for Millet. Um, the reality is that if he gets elected president, um, his party will not have more than 15 percent uh, of Congress seats, neither in the House of Representatives nor in the Senate. So he will command a minority uh, and not even the first one. Uh, the first minority will be the Peronist party. Then you will have the Juntos por el Cambio coalition, if it still exists, and otherwise you will have many small parties, and then you get his. Uh, so he will not have more than 15% of all Congress people, which is going to be a problem for sure if he doesn't cut any alliances. You know. Uh, now the question is, after Bullrich's endorsement uh, last night, um, and we're expecting a an endorsement by a formal endorsement by President Macri, who's just, he hasn't formally endorsed him, but not officially yet. Um, if he cuts an alliance with them, um, he may increase uh, the size of his you know, legislative uh, group, uh, but it's going to be hard for him to form majorities in Congress. And then there's the question of who, um, who would be you know, part of his team, of his economic team, uh, who would be uh, his, um, ministers, his minister of economy, for example. Uh, we don't really know much about that. Uh, there's some expectation that um, an alliance with Bullrich and Macri will provide him with the kind of people you know he needs, people with the expertise, people who know what the challenges uh, inside the state are. Um, but it's it's unclear really uh, what would happen. Also yeah. because after you know he won the August primaries, and there was this panic, you know, uh, in markets. He sort of um, backed down in a way from his uh, proposals because uh, before that he was just saying, he was talking about dollarization, but there were no specifics in the program. And it just seemed like he would dollarize the economy on day one, you know, but after the August primary and to try to calm everyone down, he said, you know, dollarization uh, is something that will happen um, in the, in, not in the long term, but not immediately either, you know, like in 12 months or 24 months, and there will be a transition period and things will be smooth, you know, so as to not hurt people. So in a way, it's unclear exactly what he will do and with whom he will do um, all of the all of his proposals, which is what's scaring people now. You know, many people um, on the center right are thinking, well, the election is over. Uh, even if I vote for Millet, he's probably going to lose. But if he wins, he will not be able to do anything. So many people, I, 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 what I sense these days is a lot of um, of sadness, you know, on the center right, just because Millet didn't do better uh, on the Sunday election, and because um, the math doesn't really add up, uh, neither for the runoff nor for a potential administration. But you know, Argentina is like a Pandora box everything changes uh, uh, significantly, like, you know, week to week. So everything could change. How, how much autonomy or, you know, how much cooperation would he need in order to push that 
the, what's really the central proposition of his campaign, the dollarization, the abolition of the central bank. Is that something he would have much leeway in doing, even if he had an uncooperative legislature? Um, and is there a way, we talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but is there a way to implement dollarization, do you think, that would not create the sort of nightmare scenario that spooked the markets? Well, um, the alternative, you know, to, to hyperinflation, if you want to dollarize, is to borrow money, basically. And mm -hmm. now that's where, you know, Millet's capacity to attract investments um, gets sort of called into question. Um, if Millet, for example, were, were to um, seal, you know, an alliance, uh, a, a a, an executive alliance with Bullrich or Macri, then those people may be able to uh, convince, you know, investors to borrow, to lend the Argentine state money so that the state actually has some dollars, you know, to dollarize, and so that the exchange rate doesn't need to go to the, uh, through the roof. Uh, that's, that's the alternative. Um, it will require that the state uh, take a lot of debt. Um, it's, unclear whether Millet would be able to do that. And if he were to do that, then he would have to um, proceed with his uh, fiscal adjustment plan um, much more quickly than expected because he would have to pay that debt down, of course, uh, and the state is already indebted. So that would be a problem. Um, and uh, what was the first question? I, I, I forgot about that, sorry. Uh, it was just, could he, how much buy-in does he need from oh, the right, right, to right. do and, it? And, and he needs, yeah, and I'm not sure about uh, technicalities. Um, yeah. I think that um, he may have people on his legal team trying to figure out whether he could bypass Congress for many of the proposals uh, that he wants to implement. I'm not sure he can do that. Um Argentine presidents do get a lot of leeway through decrees, uh, but there are some areas in which um, it is constitutionally forbidden uh, to issue decrees. I don't think, I'm not sure if monetary policy fits into one of those categories. I don't think so, um, but it's likely that if Millet does something that Congress doesn't like, uh, Congress does have the authority to override a decree, you know? Uh, if Congress gets two thirds uh, of a majority, then they can override whatever it is that the government is trying to do. Um, and so if that's the case and Millet can't get one third of Congress to to support him, then he would be in danger. Um, he would be, in, in my view, the the most important danger that he would face as president is um, that he would get impeached. Uh, impeachment oh. would be would be a real possibility because if he only has 15 percent of the vote you know he's just you know uh whatever he does that the opposition doesn't like they will turn that into uh grounds for impeachment and they will impeachment for sure um if he's unpopular enough of course if if that if the opposition thinks that it will be in their benefit to impeach Millet, they will do it uh that's of course assuming he will actually get elected president. But I think that's the that he he's his biggest concern right now should be that really because the the election for Congress has been done already. That's not going to change with the runoff, and he will just not have uh, many Congress people. So that's what I would be focusing on right now: how to avoid impeachment on day mm -hmm. one or day two. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching that clip of our talk with Marcos Falcone about the presidential candidacy of Javier Millet. You can watch the full conversation here or another clip over here.